why did you yeah, go right. <laughs> to the first protest that you went to? Like, like you said, before, before all the lockdowns, you would focus on the videos, et cetera, on, on the weddings, et cetera. Lockdown happened. You started making memes and doing a bit of that stuff. But at some point you went, I have to pick up a camera and I have to actually get there. What was that thought process for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I can go back a bit and cover some of mm. the ways that I've kind of uh, changed in terms of my views good. of this entire lockdown thing. But maybe we can yep. go to that later. But initially, like, you. in terms of going to... Oh, well, I mean, look, when this all started for me uh, as a business owner, and I've shared this story multiple times now with people that mm. think that uh, it's hypocritical kind of change your views, for instance, right? But you have to understand that when this all this happened, I, my, my experience with this is as a business owner. So for yeah. me, when all this happened, you know, we got behind my business, myself, uh, we got behind the government in terms of what they were doing. So, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of the community at that, at that point, this is in, in March, 2020, very early on, yep. Uh, yep. Got, got behind what was happening. Um, and what people don't understand is like for someone like me, who's very much engrossed in, in news and social media and all this kind of stuff. I had been looking at these events unfolding in China and stuff uh, since, yeah. you know, some in Jan, towards late Jan. And yeah. there was already commentary happening online within other, uh, in other countries about what was going on. So I was concerned, uh, definitely, you know, like it's something new. We hadn't seen this before. And mm -hmm. for me, the concern was mostly around uh, not the health, health aspect of it, but just from being someone that's engrossed in history, I've seen how governments react to these situations. So mm -hmm. I've always been uh, weary of how governments will actually, you know, react to these situations in terms of, you know, whether it might be food shortages or all this kind of stuff, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, up in February, I was already ordering masks. I was uh, purchasing, you know, um, this is before all the hysteria, long before that, uh, yeah. purchasing yeah. extra stuff and all this kind of stuff, right? Do stuff that people ended up doing a month or so after. And yeah. um, so I was genuinely invested in supporting the government. It seemed like something different, new, like we hadn't experienced this before. Um, and, you know, for a few months there, I, as much as I was, you know, upset about it as a business owner, because obviously it's impacting the wedding industry in a massive way. Hugely, uh, hugely, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was fully to sacrifice in my business no matter what happened um you know and do what i need to do in terms of supporting the government mm -hmm. but along the way uh you kind of see these uh cracks emerging uh you see you can't you start seeing once you start paying attention you start seeing that actually a lot of this is actually very politicized now it's very political mm -hmm. and these these people these politicians these bureaucrats are actually now playing with our lives and our livelihoods, of mm -hmm. course, they've got a reason to be doing that. But the way they're going mm -hmm. about it is, you know, maybe not ta transparent. Uh, it's causing different issues. Uh, other, I'm seeing other states doing different things. Other countries do different things. Yeah. And then you start questioning, yeah. you know, wh why is it that this is happening to us in our state? For instance, that was my first kind of uh, moment where I realized, like, something's not quite right. Um, yeah. Personally, like, that's what I felt, right? And then... Um, I mean, you can probably relate to this, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this because I think a lot of people initially were very open-minded in terms of doing their bit for the country um, yeah. and the state. Yeah. Look, it's it's fair to say if this had turned out to be something like a Spanish flu or worse, um, then some of the reaction would be much more justified. Uh, I would argue that in around about March, about the middle of March, I released my first video. I believe it was the third week of March, 2020. And by then, we already had data coming out from the likes of uh, Professor Johnny Ioannidis and other luminaries of the world of epidemiology. I mean, genuinely, like Professor Johnny Ioannidis, he literally wrote the book on epidemiology and statistics around epidemiology. All these other epidemiologists in the world, they became qualified epidemiologists because they read his book and they learned from him, right? He's the guy. And he came out in about the third week of, epi uh, of, of, the, of March, sorry. Um, and the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine also separately came out with their own thing, all of which pointing to this is bad. It's about three times worse, three times deadlier than a normal flu, but that's about it, 
which is not even as deadly as a Spanish flu. And, and that was really where, for me, I agree with you. When they first said two weeks to slow the spread, two weeks to protect the healthcare system, I went along with that, right? Yeah, you know, as, as the vast majority of people did. People in Australia are generally very goodwilled and we generally want what's best for, for our neighbor and, and we're willing to pay a certain price in order to achieve that. Um, you, know, you may recall back then they were saying, don't wear masks. They were saying, it's a waste of a mask. Don't wear a mask. Just socially distance, limits on capacities for, for restaurants and cafes and so forth. And then sort of one thing went to another. So so that's how it began. How, how did you arrive at the point where you picked up a camera and you went to a protest? And and which protest was yeah, that, by so, the way? Uh, I think it was the protest. It was actually the first protest I went to was the protest at the Shrine. Thing. Okay. Yep. There was a protest at the Shrine in, in, in October, October 23rd, maybe. I'm just trying to remember so, exactly. Funnily enough, the, the video that I have teed up uh, to play during our toilet break coming up at about 9.30 uh, is actually my speech from that protest. So that's the, that's the, okay, the, well, the protest yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I'm pretty sure it was that one. The date, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's that. And the story behind that is I had been watching, uh, you know, these kind of protest coverage on, on the television because there's been other protests before that. Um, yep. And famously, we had the BLM protest as well in June or July. Correct. And uh, you know, I've been kind of following. I've I've been following that and doing kind of news snippets and doc commentary based on those things. And uh, it got to a point for me where I, f I kind of sensed that something wrong in the way that the media is portraying the events that are happening at these protests. Uh, and not from any not not from any particular like. Um, not, not from anyone telling me or anything like this. I just kind of got that sense, right, from yeah. Yeah. what I was seeing on, you know, phone footage, for instance, that was on screen that was being circulated. Uh, yeah. It just didn't kind of match. It didn't match the reporting of the mainstream media. And for someone like me who's very uh, curious about how the media works and operates, it got me interested in the sense that, you know, they, they're doing something here. Uh, they're being cheeky with their coverage. Um, mm -hmm. and if they, if they can make me, who's not really, wasn't really paying attention at that time, uh, mm -hmm. to think that these people that are out there listing, are, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the great unwashed of society, they're, they're just the, you know, the lepers of the society that are causing trouble for it. If they can, if they can almost get me to think that who's someone who's very attuned to all this stuff, right. Cause I, I wasn't, I wasn't fully focused on what was going on with the protests mm. and stuff. If they can do that to me, they must be being very effective doing that to the general public uh, who are yeah. maybe not as attuned to what's going on. Right? Because these yeah. videos didn't make sense that you were seeing from people. So that's what kind of pushed me to challenge myself and go out and actually see your protest and mm. what these people are all about. Mm. And actually going to my going to my first... And I, to be honest, any, anyone that's like, you know, for everyone that's watching, I had never ever in my life before that really gone to a protest. So, mm. you know, I've I've kind of lived this existence where I have I've seen these things on TV, but I've never actually gone and understood what you know this is mm. about. Right? Uh, I'd always just commented on it from afar. So I actually went and uh, with a camera, and I thought, yeah, you know, I'll go there, I'll film, and I'll do this thing, right? Um, yeah. And then what I <laughs> what I what I noticed quickly was that actually these people they're just like me they're just Melbourneians mm -hmm. they're just Victorians uh, mm -hmm. they're no different to me uh, they're normal like normal people <laughs> they're not what's being portrayed on the television as such and yeah. you know you just, you, it just it just humanizes things when you're actually there. Uh, you're hearing to the hearing these people. You're hearing the actual, you know, the sincerity of what they're saying in their voices. Yeah, uh, it's not yeah. cut together in a in a package for the news that night. So that kind of changed a lot of my understanding of what was going on. And then the biggest uh, get, takeaway for me is that later that night, the news reported that there was a few hundred people there, and uh, I had with uh, my uh, own uh, eye. I had I had I, I had with my own eyes. Right, and this is someone that was not, let's say, supportive of this, what was going on, or whatever. Sure, I had, with my sure. own eyes, seen you know a, a, few, a few thousand people. Mm. So to actually see how they were manipulating the narrative, uh, to see how yeah. dishonest they were being, um, yeah. it really got me like 
this has to be like you know these people are either just having everyone on or, mm. or you know you know they can't they can't be this stupid like these reporters can't be this stupid because i'm standing yeah. right next to them and they're yeah. reporting something that didn't even happen 